What's up everybody, Steve here. I'm a local real estate broker here in Florida and I kind of wanted to give my take on some of the things that happened over in Surfside with the collapse of the building. Um, I also personally own two beachfront condos at this point in time. I've owned several others and I probably have owned at least eight to 10 condos in Florida altogether. And also over the years being a licensed agent since 03 and a broker since 2006, um, I've sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of condos over the years, both inland as well as on the beaches out here in Southwest Florida. Um, anyway, definitely wanted to give my condolences to all the family members who experienced that tragedy and all the lost lives. I mean, what a horrific thing that happened. I, I'm not here to speculate. I'm not here to think that I'm some sort of engineer in any sense, but the goal of this video is if you currently are interested in buying a condo in Florida or you currently own a condo in Florida, I think that there are certain things that you should be aware of that may not be talked about a lot when you're going through that process, especially, you know, a lot of real estate agents, you know, they're newer to the business and they don't really understand really what goes into um, purchasing a condominium and an association and everything else. But I always, always encourage people to do thorough due diligence when they are buying into any association or condo association. Now, in the state of Florida, you have three days from receipt of all the condo docs um, for a resale condo to review all the condo docs, to review all the financials, and you have three days to back out for any reason. So that's really your time period to dig deep into the association, as well as check out the premises, as well as talk to board members and talk to the association manager and dig up as much relevant information as possible. Also, be sure to stick with us because I'm gonna head to another condo that we own across the street from the beach and they're actually in the process of doing the concrete restoration there. So I wanna bring you guys over there and kind of show you what is necessary to make sure that you guys have a building that is upkept and doing what you need to do, especially when you're at the beach or you know across the street from the beach there's a lot of wear and tear, especially with the salt water and the salty air that happens more on the beach than a condo inland. So I'm gonna bring you guys over there after, after this as well so we can talk further about what's going on over there. Um, while I'm thinking about it, some tips though. For one thing, you know, over here at this Benita condo, I can visually walk through and see a lot of what's going on a big thing that you want to look for when you're buying into any condo association is any kind of cracking of concrete or exposed rebar it's called spalling as well and if you see major signs of that then it might not be the property for you um, I know here in southwest Florida as, as well as the east coast of Florida I've looked at many, many condo communities. And there's certain ones that I would just steer clear of. There's no way that I would invest in them. Not saying that these properties are gonna collapse in any sense, but the amount of def deferred maintenance. So that's one thing that people don't necessarily talk about is deferred maintenance. If you have an association or a board, which is all voluntary positions, if you have a board that's really not doing what they're supposed to be doing, allocating a certain amount of funds and reserve funds for things that need to be completed. For example, this building here, we just had new roofs put on and there really wasn't enough allocation of funds to do the complete roof. So we all got hit with a small assessment. It wasn't too bad, but if, if there's not enough funds in reserves to do necessary things like concrete restoration, parking lots, painting, balconies roofs then odds are people are going to get special assessed and that's the last thing you want to do when you're buying into an association is you're like excited to to buy into a condo or whatever the case is and then you know down the road they have a board meeting something comes up and you're going to get hit with an assessment all right so let's take a quick ride i'm going to bring you to the other building over in uh, Bonita Beach as well, where they're currently doing the concrete restoration so you can see where they're at in the process. Also with the concrete restoration, many times you find that 
a lot of these uh, buildings, when they start to really chip away at a lot of the faulty areas, that it's in some cases more severe than initially thought, and they have to do a lot more. So in this case, the building I'm gonna bring you to, they actually had to cut into the balconies. So the balconies are all concrete with steel reinforced rebar, and because of the wear and tear and the, the salt water and the salty air, it just, over over time, it just started to decay and, and spall the, uh, the, the rebar. It, it expands and contrasts. And sure enough, they had to actually cut into many of the balconies, which I'll show you over there. Um, before we get there, another thing that I look at, besides just the overall appearance now, real quick too if you guys are buying a, a condo um, obviously we highly encourage everybody to do a home inspection but understand the home inspector is gonna basically just inspect the interior of that unit it's not like a house where you get an entire home inspection the outside the inside so a home inspector on a condo is really just responsible for inspecting the interior now i bet if you have a good inspector if you pay them a little bit more money that they could just kind of do their own quick walk around assessment of the overall structure the overall complex and they might point out things that might be an issue so that you might not necessarily see or whatever the case is at a minimum make sure you do walk the premises and see if you see any deferred maintenance but if you have a, a good home inspector, pay him a little bit more, he or she a little bit more money, and they can maybe go around and, and find some other items. So if they do find certain items that, um, that are deferred maintenance, I would bring that to the attention of the association manager or the board and ask questions. Are there reserves in place that are gonna cover for the expense of whether that the be you know new pavement, new roofs. Um, obviously, if you see any um, any exposed rebar, anything that is going to be a big ticket item, I would want to make sure that you are comfortable buying that asset and ensuring that the appropriate amount of reserves are in place to pay for that when that comes due and a lot of good associations are going to have adequate reserves to pay for stuff like that the next thing i'm looking at is, are the financials so it kind of coincides with that as well i want to look and dig into the financials and make sure that they're financially healthy that they do have a good amount of reserves that they're charging the right amount of money for association fees and it's not too low and it's not too high to see also in the budget if there's any kind of wasteful spending. Um, because, you know, not every association is treated the same. And as mentioned, I've been, I think, nine or 10 condos, and also not just condos, but townhomes and everything else in other associations. And I can tell you, there's a lot of, a lot of you know, again, board members, it's a, um, it's a volunteer position. So a lot of times these board members, they're, they don't, a lot of times they don't know anything about real estate or construction either so you got to be very cautious and weary of any association you're buying into so again I would want to look for any kind of wasteful spending and also another thing and it's cool on this building I'm gonna to bring to you how are they generating revenue in a majority of cases it's gonna be through a handful of things it's going to be obviously the monthly or quarterly HOA assessments or condo assessments all right so it's the monthly fees that you guys pay um, other ways of creating revenue within the association are from application fees uh, some will have capital contribution fees so the new buyer that buys a condo might have to pay say a thousand dollar capital contribution fee um, other thing things are like um, if they rent out storage or you know they have bicycle storage kayak storage maybe there's garages so I, I want to look at all the ways that they're they're making money and, and creating revenue um, but what's cool about the complex I'm bringing you guys to is 
they it's it, it's treated more like a condo hotel in a sense and they're they make money in multiple ways not just from necessarily the owners there so there's commercial space where we actually have our real estate office so we pay monthly uh, lease rate to the association I think there's at least seven or eight different places including a cafe that pay um, lease rates we also have I think we have two cell phone towers on top of these buildings um, I think they're they bring in like 20 to 30 grand each per year uh, the tennis pro there's a bunch of tennis courts the tennis pro actually pays a monthly fee to be the main pro and he charges um, for uh, for lessons and everything else and then obviously for owners and tenants they do have additional storage they have bicycle storage they have kayak storage there's um, dry boat slips there's wet boat slips so they make a lot of different money or uh, they have many different ways of producing revenue in this complex which which is cool because it's not just reliant on basically HOA fees all right so we are pulling into this place so this is called the beach and tennis club over on Bonita Beach so that's actually the cafe it's uh looks like it's under construction but they just had to build a, a wall and a catwalk and then our office is actually right there So as you can see, they've been able to, you can see in that far left corner over there, they've been able to chip into the balconies. All the balconies normally look like this over here where they got the uh, screen line eyes and everything. So all the screen line eyes are off. They got safety plywood up. And then to the left over here, obviously you can see some of the exposed rebar um, and, and chipping away at that. So this is basically the process of concrete restoration that is necessary in especially on the coastline in Florida if, if if this is in any way neglected then you're gonna run into some big issues but you can definitely see even like way up there on the ceiling too that you can see almost exposed rebar that they got over there so um, and then obviously the buildings are gonna be all repainted and everything else so I would say, and again, I'm not going to speculate what happened over in Surfside and it, complete tragedy and it was, you know, very unfortunate. Um, the thing is, it's, it's, we have to keep an eye on deferred maintenance because it could become a dangerous situation. And obviously, um, the situation got, ex I mean, we all saw what happened there and it's such a tragedy. So and you know just some of the videos and some of the pictures that i saw of the the champlain towers um you know it looked like there was a lot of deferred maintenance over there that should have been taken care of uh, sooner and later whether that was the cause of anything i'm not going to speculate on that maybe you currently own a condo and and you you know you see deferred maintenance maybe you should get on the board and run for the board and and talk about this stuff because um again not all board members are created equal and you know it, it there is a certain level of expertise that should be on the board and if you have that expertise or you want to get more involved then i encourage you to do so so you guys can protect your asset as well as the assets of other people in the uh, community thanks a lot for stopping by and uh i'll see you guys on the next video thanks a lot oh.